But if you can get a neural interface with the bandwidth of that, say, like the two hemispheres are connected, which is about 100 million fibers on both sides that project across the midline to connect the two hemispheres of your brain into a single thing. If you can get something of that bandwidth, which is probably only tens of megabits, then this takes you into really interesting territory about really being able to redraw the, the borders around brains and gets at the, this thing called the binding problem. And that feels less than 20 years away for me. This feels not like the next five years, but not uh, not to the distant future, like within people's lifespans today. So let's double click on that. Tell us about the binding problem and how you think this addresses that. Well, the I mean, I don't have a solution for the, the binding problem is if the brain is made up of a lot of different neurons and a lot of different areas kind of connected together, why do we, where does this unified perception come from? You uh, you you see the world, you can think about it, you hear things, all of this is fit together into a coherent whole for you. When the blue bird flies past you, the blue doesn't come off of the bird and the chirping doesn't seem like it's coming from somewhere else. It seems like a unified object. Yeah, exactly. Even though even though blue is processed apparently in one part of your brain and the motion in another part and the chirping in a different part. Yeah. Okay. And so in some, there's some sense in which almost all communication is about creating correlations between brains. There's, we're having a conversation right now, there's concept spaces in my brain that are being active that I developed from like education, like learning English, learning math, learning science, doing these things. And I can serialize these neural activations to vibrations over the air, send over to you, receive through your ears, that then activate these correlations in your brain that allow us to share these concepts. And, uh, but we don't, our brains don't become one thing. And so there's, uh, there's some, point between the, the types of correlations that you get between the hemispheres of a brain and the types of correlations that we get between brains that are in dialogue. And where does this, where is that crossing point? We don't know today. Um, but I think that biohybrid devices have the potential to get get close to there. And that takes us to really different regimes than uh, kind of conventional BCI technology. <laughs> 